Well, today I'm going to do it again. I'm going to pick on Spain and I'm going to tell you why among golden visas, theirs just isn't that competitive. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson. This is Nomad Capitalist, where we help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you're treated best. And while for the second time in the last decade, I'm going to spend New Year's Eve this year in Barcelona. I have a number of friends coming in to meet me. Uh, I like being a tourist in Spain. I don't really want you to live there and I don't really want you to consider their golden visa. Now, are there circumstances where a Spanish golden visa makes sense? Absolutely. Let's talk first about investment level. Spain's not the most affordable. It's not the most expensive. You can find programs that are more expensive, Ireland, the UK, etc. Those countries charge a premium for being English language, for not being part of the Schengen area. If you want to live there, you've got to pay a higher price. Spain has basically a half a million euro real estate investment. And so again, if you already own property in Spain, there's a number of people in, in the UK, for example, who have owned holiday properties in Spain who could simply go back and qualify for their golden visa. No harm in doing that. Half a million euros. Now, do I want to buy property in Spain? Taxes are relatively high. Uh, the prospect of having your property taken away, uh, you would argue that, hey, uh, a lot of the property being taken away rhetoric was against people who own lots of properties, not one. But listen, there have been countries in the West that have said, listen, uh, second homes, let's either put a tax on them, let's do something with them. Uh, so that concerns me about Spain. I'm not saying they're going to take away your property, but I'm saying it's worth considering that it may be more expensive to own property there than someone somewhere else. Hence why it might have to be a lifestyle decision. You look at a country like Portugal, they used to have more affordable real estate options and perhaps depending on where you want to buy, they still do. So theoretically, a Portugal could be cheaper. Portugal also now has other non-real estate investment options that potentially offer you a lower tax cost, lower round trip cost to buy into. And so whether you look at Portugal at maybe the same price or a little bit less, whether you look at something like Latvia or Greece, uh, which have lower price points for their residence by investment program, Spain is not the cheapest. But okay, it's competitive. People want to live there. Perhaps you don't want to buy property in Latvia. You want to buy, you don't, you want to buy it in Spain. You don't mind perhaps paying some extra tax. Uh, now, in terms of uh, work and study uh, across the Schengen area, all pretty similar. In terms of the minimum time in the country to keep your golden visa, Spain does uh, beat out programs like Ireland, uh, programs like Portugal in terms of how long you need to stay there to renew and to keep your your residence permit. That said, in Portugal, seven days a year. Ireland, one day a year. Greece and Malta, also no technical minimum requirements. So we're not talking big differences there. In terms of uh, what you need to do to get citizenship, well, this is where Spain really starts to, to fall apart because you look at a country like uh, Portugal, like Ireland, uh, like Malta. Theoretically, and we're talking about Malta's residence by investment, not their citizenship by investment. Theoretically, you can get citizenship in those countries in as little as five years. Now, it may take six months a year. It may take substantially all of the year, depending on the country. There may be a language requirement. Um, but in Spain, it is 10 years of six months per year. And on top of that, a lot of countries in Europe have slowed down in approving people for citizenship in the last uh, year or two, especially if you're applying for things like citizenship by descent. Spain, from the begin, even before I started Nomad Capitalist, I was traveling the world and talking to people who were applying for Spanish citizenship. I remember one particular time I was talking to someone at a bar and they said, yeah, I've been waiting for four years. By the way, all those years you are living in Spain, you're paying taxes. People talk about, oh, Portugal has the NHR. Um, oh, you know, Ireland has a tax incentive. Even Greece and Malta, they have tax incentives. Spain has a tax incentive. It's a pretty bad tax incentive. And so not only are you committing the lifestyle resources to spend six months per year in Spain, maybe you want to do that. That's fine. But if you don't, six months a year, 10 years, plus you're probably going to wait longer than any of the, these other countries for the, to process your application. Plus, in order to do that, you're going to pay tax. Now, you'll hear people who are selling you golden visas who are going to tell you, well, you don't have to live in Portugal to renew the residence permit. But yes, you need to live there in order to qualify for citizenship. And so if you just want to keep a residence permit forever, you can do that. I would argue theoretically, why not buy a property in Latvia? Why not buy one or multiple properties in Greece uh, where potentially you can get more bang for your buck or potentially there are fewer tax risks in a country like a Latvia? Why not just do that if your goal is to never work towards citizenship by not being there? Or why don't you look at a country like Portugal where there is a lesser 
uh, threshold in order to qualify for citizenship, Spain to me just loses on all of these counts. Uh, now, who can you add? Spouses, dependent children, dependent parents, pretty similar across all the programs. In terms of tax incentive, as I said, uh, really no program. Um, in terms of tax for direct descendants and descendants, basically an inheritance tax, um, you know, none of these countries necessarily are perfect. Malta, probably the best. Uh, Spain uh, is not perfect. And so in terms of you own a property and you, you, you later pass away, how is that going to work? Well, Spain's going to get involved in that. Spain is also one of the few countries in Europe that still has a wealth tax. And so that's worth considering if you're going to actually live there. You can say, well, hey, I don't have an income. What do I care about income? Or what do I care about having a tax incentive for that? Well, they have that. The fact that most of the countries in Europe that had a wealth tax got rid of it, Spain still has it, uh, that's some cause for concern. So what's interesting to me about Spain, and I've said this before, you know, Portugal, perhaps, the government is not any different than that it is in Spain in terms of, hey, let's tax people and make people's lives difficult. But Portugal realizes it has to have some innovation. It has to bring some people in. It doesn't have the brand name. It doesn't have the population. It doesn't have all the resources that a country like Spain does. Spain, I think, is in full, uh, hey, listen, people are coming. <laughs> They'll pay mode. It's like the Gavin Newsom. Where are you going to go? And so from the perspective of buying real estate, again, if you want to buy real estate in Spain just for your own lifestyle purposes, I get it. I'm not about saving every penny. If I wanted to live in Spain, I would suck up some of the costs uh, to, to do that on the tax side. But if your goal is access to Europe, if your goal is future citizenship, then you're going to potentially be taking on more tax costs and or tax risk in Spain. Obviously, again, Portugal's program, you can't buy real estate in some of the key areas anymore. That does make Spain more advantageous against Portugal. Uh, and Portugal certainly has a better track to citizenship. But again, if the, if the idea is investing less and having more investment freedom, then you look at Greece, which has half the requirement and offers the same flexibility in buying different properties. Perhaps not the total tax freedom, but then again, you could go to Latvia, you could go to Ireland. So you've got other programs that I think Spain kind of, no matter which way you look, doesn't really match up. It mirrors the other programs in terms of things that are pretty standard. It adds some tax risk and it adds substantial physical presence risk and timeline to citizenship. For the same reason people don't talk about Italy's golden visa program, even after they slashed some of the investment levels last year, people don't talk about Spain's that much, again, unless you're already going there. I've been hearing that from real estate brokers of all people, going back to 2013, 2014, 2015, I suppose, um, who said, listen, we don't really push the golden visa very much. If someone buys an expensive property, hey, by the way, you can do this. Oh, that's cool. But no one's really going there for that reason. And hopefully now you can see why. Don't stop now. We've got well over a thousand more videos here on YouTube for you to watch and learn how to go where you're treated best. And if you want to work with Nomad Capitalist personally, go to nomadcapitalist.com apply, learn about our unique tried and true process, garnered over years of experience, and learn how you can become our client.